One, two, three. This is Dr. Alex Avila, and this is Love University, and we're back. I'm an author, speaker, psychologist, and every week we talk about how to love yourself, others, and higher nature, how to improve your life in every aspect, psychologically, emotionally, spiritually, and we have a lot of great guests, and today we have a really very interesting guest I'm very pleased to have, and she is Erica Diamond, who is an author, a leading woman's expert in lifestyle, balance, and parenting. She's an award-winning entrepreneur. Uh, she won awards, top 30 under 30 entrepreneur, top 40 under 40. Uh, she was named on the list of 25 best Twitter feeds for women, 50 best blogs for women. She's the founder of the award-winning woman's lifestyle brand, Women on the Fence. And on top of that, she teaches yoga and she's a mom. Welcome, Erica, to the show. Hello, how are you? Hi, great. So what, what don't you do, Erica? It sounds like you do a little bit of everything. How do you do all these things? I don't cook. I'm a really oh. loud cook. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that's, that's not too bad. <laughs> I mean, I, I do cook, but I burn meals. I am oh, not you burn meals. Okay. Well, that, that's uh, understandable. Now, you have a very fascinating platform uh, for women called Women on the Fence. And when I hear, uh, think of the word fence, a woman uh, being on the fence, I think of someone who's undecided or not sure what they want to do. And you told me that, that you basically uh, were very successful as entrepreneurs at a young age. You sold it to be a mom, to stay home, and then you wanted to do something different. So how did that evolve, this woman on the fence? So it's exactly as you said. I had started this company when I was 24 years old, and it was growing, and we were growing. And, you know, I was named a Profit Hot 50 CEO, one of Canada's 50 emerging growth companies. Wow. And I started burning out quickly. Um, yes, I can imagine. It was just my role as entrepreneur, managing employees and, my mo and, and a mom. And my second son was on the way and I literally had the opportunity, as they say, uh, you know, it was really, it was an offer I couldn't refuse. And so Canada's largest chain of bags was courting me to purchase my business. And I looked at it as, the, as, a, as a, you know, an opportunity to sell my business and stay home for a little bit and have my second baby and kind of, figure out my next game plan. So I stayed home for three years, I sold my company, and then I started to get that entrepreneurial itch <laughs> when my baby was, well, a couple of years old in preschool, about three years old. And I was feeling really stuck and really on the fence. And I said, gee, what can I do? And my husband said to me, well, why don't you come work for me? You're so great in sales. And I said, well, that would probably end up in divorce. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that can happen. <laughs> but I, yeah. And I was trying to think, you know, what I could do to be entrepreneurial with these two kids. I really was craving work-life balance and my own schedule and not a job that I had to, you know, come in and clock in and punch into. Yes. So I was at this kind of literally a mom, you know, a mommy lunch with my baby and I met this girl, Tracy, and she introduced herself and she said, you know, I have a blog named Grumble Girl. I said, what's a blog? Yes. She said, well, I, it's an online platform where I write about my life. And I said, wow, well, my life is not interesting or exciting at all. No one would definitely, you know, no one would be interested in reading about it. But I said, you know, tell me a little bit more. And then she's like, well, there's this blogger named Deuce.com, Heather Armstrong. She's, you know, making about $100,000 a month in revenue on her blog. And mm -hmm. I was like, whoa, this could be. That sounds pretty, that's pretty good money. <laughs> now, let me ask you, Erica, the idea of being on the fence, um, why are women, if you say this is true, undecided or unsure? What is the, um, the issue there? Because I think you talk about looking for external things to make you happy. So why are women on the fence these days? I think it comes down so much to self-esteem. So I think as you exercise your resilience muscle and your self-esteem muscle and you become good at failing forward, ah. you're better at making decisions, you're better at making strategic decisions, and you don't, say, you don't stay so stuck. So I think we're often on the fence because we don't have the tools or the resources or the self-confidence to make a decision to move forward. Mm, that makes sense. So believing in yourself, um, and we talk about this in Love University, uh, loving yourself first is one of the keys to um, success and happiness to, I guess, really admire your t great talents and abilities that you may have that may not be fulfilled yet. And Absolutely. I, talk, I t actually talk a lot about that on the mat as a yoga teacher. Ah. I talk about self-love, self-care, and how in the 60 minutes on the mat in our class, how you know you should honor yourself for the gift that you've given yourself of self-care and self-love. And so I remind them to sort of step off the mat slowly, keep the good vibes going, and in order to serve the world, you can't give from an empty cup. Yes, I like that. And you also talk about what you call self-care. You said take 30 to 60 minutes a day of pleasurable activities uh, to create your own sanctuary. Now you talk about Netflix or sex. Are those two good activities people can do? Hey, it's whatever floats your boat. Whatever <laughs> means to okay. you. If it means, uh, you know, what, go for a yeah. walk. If it yes. means 
making yourself, you know, a hot bath with a cup of tea. If it means perusing a bookstore with a cup of coffee, whatever is pleasurable to you, you got to mm. pencil in my prescriptions 30 to 60 minutes a day. What other tips can you give uh, busy moms, you know, because they have their kids. How can they get away at 60 minutes? They'll say, you know, I have so many things to do. I might even sure. work part time. So great question. I will quote my friend and lifestyle guru, Samantha Edis, who says to move everything to the golden triangle. So what that means is everything should be within the triangle of school, home, and work. Mm. So if you're driving kind of an hour to your hair salon and the dentist is 90 minutes away, move everything inside the perimeter of the golden triangle. If it's outside, switch your dentist, mm. switch your dry cleaner, switch your hairdresser, switch your doctor, keep everything in the golden triangle to save time. Mm. When we say golden triangle, are you talking about a geographic map or what, what does geographic that mean? You bet, from school, home, and work. Ah, so you want everything within that radius, like uh, doctors and hair, hairstylists and things like that. Everything. We're Sometimes we're, we're, you know, we're with someone for a long time, either a doctor or, you know, like I said, just any services that we're using. Ah. So cut that out if it's outside the perimeter and keep it within. I like that. Now, you, are you in Canada, Erica, uh, right now? I'm in I'm in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, yeah. Now, in your city, is that pretty easy to do? Cause I'm thinking like smaller towns or even bigger cities, it may not be always that easy to do everything in one area. Yeah, we're pretty fortunate. I mean, I live on the island of Montreal. There are a lot of people who live off the island, and it's not too far even if you live off the island. So the Golden Triangle is pretty golden here in Montreal. Things are pretty close. Wow. How about the idea of time? Because, you know, a lot of people talk about time pressures, and uh, even the belief that they don't really have time for themselves, uh, to say a mom, single mom, or a mom that's married. So how do you teach them to take time first for themselves uh, and, and not feel guilty, you know, not, that they're not doing sure. things in the house or the, with the family? Sure. So I always advise moms, busy working moms or not, to, uh, you know, the, the golden hour. And Anthony Robbins speaks a lot about this kind of like the hour of power. So yes. what I do is what I tell my life coaching clients is to program, you know, their nighttime. They're just if they're going to want to be staying up late, they're just going to have to mm. record things and watch them on the weekend. So the importance of going to bed early and then getting up early and the ah. success, the studies on early risers. And so yes. doing the things like getting a head start on the day and really incorporating self-care yes. into your morning routine before the kids mm. are up, even maybe before a partner's awake to really to read the newspaper, to make maybe answer some emails. Mm -hmm. So to get, you know, that hour undistracted, A, if you have work to do, or if you want to just do, you know, some sun salutations on a mat to feel grounded to start your day, really to get up early and the importance mm -hmm. and kind of the, the success and stu the studies on success and early risers yeah. and Laura, Laura okay. Van Kem. Yes. If you're interested in this, she has all the research on early risers. Yeah, well, of course, I say uh, the early bird catches the worm, but if you don't like worms, it's not a good idea, I guess. So you better. <laughs> and also, I guess their biorhythm. Some people actually do uh, better at night sometimes in terms of their energy levels, uh, they say. But um, it depends you know, on the person. Yeah, it's a personal call, but um, there is a lot of, we're seeing really a lot of research on the success of, of early risers yes. and getting those tasks done also, and some of those futile tasks that you don't enjoy, yeah. just getting them done exactly. in the morning when you're I like fresh. That. Now, uh, one thing that you talk about, Erica, that's very, very interesting is you talk about off the fence living. And mm -hmm. then, uh, you know, when you're stuck on the fence, I can visualize someone who's stuck, you know, like they're on the top of this fence and, and they're kind of like trying to get over it. And you said, uh, do the next right thing right now. Tell us about that. Yeah. So when I feel when you're stuck and you kind of can't see the forest from the trees and you don't know what to do and you're trying, you're trying to see the end game and the end goal and the outcome and you just don't know the path to take, I say, what is the next right move right now? And so this way, it takes away the whole overwhelming feeling. And again, that self-esteem saying, well, maybe I don't have the tools to make a decision. I don't have, you know, I'm not armed with the right equipment to make the decision right now. Well, what is the next right move? And pivot. And from there, get to the next step. What is the next right move? And, and so that is how I have found. I'm trying to think of an example off the top of my head, and it's not coming to me. But hmm. um, it's really to break it down into next right moves for you. And I okay. tell my kids all the time, if they... If they do poorly on an exam, instead of saying, oh my God, I have to study so hard for the next exam, okay, what's the next right move? Next right move is going to your teacher with your test. What did I do wrong? Let, let's, let's break it down. 
you know, what do I not, let's make a list of what I do understand and what I don't understand. So what is the next right thing? Go see where you backtrack, trace your stress steps. And as you do that, you accumulate knowledge and learning and, and, you know, the world kind of opens up for you as you take the next right step. So that's what that means. I see. Erica, your namesake diamond is very accurate because you have a lot of enthusiasm. You sparkle like a diamond. I, so. you know, I, you know what? I, I was born this way. My everyone says oh. that I have a lot of energy. I just sleep a, I sleep a lot. That's my That's secret. That's awesome. Now, now what if better. we, uh, Eric? What if we combine? You got two steps. You have take the next right thing right now. You also say go outside your comfort zone. And I'm thinking of um, I work a lot with uh, people in relationships, women or men that are maybe shy and they have a hard time finding the right uh, partner, the right soulmate. And let's say a woman has had difficult, maybe bad experiences in dating and incompatible mates, and even a divorce. How do you teach them to get back into that and, you know, find that right person? So sometimes I just say, if you want to not stay stuck, you got to suck it up, buttercup. <laughs> <Sometimes, laughs> oh, very good. So you do, little, you do a little rhyming, a little rapping too, no? Uh, sometimes, you know, it's a comfortable place to stay stuck. And I say that all the yes. time. Sometimes it's really easy just to sit around and do nothing. You yes. know, happiness takes work. And yes. so if you're committed to your happiness and you're tired of where you are, well, it's going to take Mm -hmm. You know, getting off the fence is going to take going to a networking event to meet someone for a business opportunity. It's going to take going online and registering your profile to meet someone online. It, you know, you're not going to get anywhere by sitting on your AS bleep, right? <laughs> so, Erica, let's say that um, a woman's at a social event and she meets, sees a guy she wants to meet and she's kind of shy. What should she do to meet, the, meet him? Well, she could, so listen, I'm no dating and romance expert, so I don't think you should take dating advice from me. <laughs> okay. I don't know everything, Dr. Well, Bila. it worked for you. Well, you got married, though, so it must have worked one time, no? I've been oh. with my husband since I'm 19 years wow. old. Wow. We okay. were in summer camp together, and he had a girlfriend at the time. Okay. And then well, I in general, I mean, uh, give advice. I mean, a woman that wants to uh, start a business or, uh, you know, find a soulmate, you know, and she's uh, scared of it or shy or hesitant, what should she do? Well, I always say, look at your immediate list. Like, look at your your your, ex your network of existing contacts or people are a great place to start. So can you reach out to people that you love that are near and dear to you and put some feelers out there and say, listen, I've, you know, I, I'm out of a relationship, but broken up with my partner. I'm ready to date again. You know, let me know if you think of anybody for me. Same thing. I'm I'm looking for a job in marketing. Let me know if you know anyone. So it's a I, you, you've got to get out there. You have to be out there. You have to be a little bit vulnerable, and you've got to put feelers out. I mean, it's as simple as that. If you sit at home as a hermit all the time, and it's a beautiful time. Spring is here. Summer's coming. Um, yes. It's a great time to get out. Now, yes. You know, try a few new things. Go to somewhere alone. I go wow. to a lot of places alone. I actually, mm -hmm. it was Elizabeth Gilbert. Uh, she's the author of yes. Pray Love. She wrote a great post on Instagram today that I commented on. Wow. And she says, if you want to do something great for yourself. So she was holding up a book. She says, once a week, take yourself out for breakfast, sit by a sunny window, take a great book and see how your world opens up for you. Ah, so, I like that. Um, so being a little bit internal energy, but also open to the the outside world. you got to be, be open and start with those thing. that you know. Start with those you know and put feelers yes. out to those you know and feel comfortable with. Yeah, definitely. So let's say, Erica, let's say we, we have our soulmate, and now we're talking about parenting. I know you do a lot of work in that area. And there's kind yeah. of a little bit of a, a debate going on uh, between the so-called compassionate parenting, kind of like uh, being a coach, a mentor, even a friend of your child and providing unconditional love, and the old school disciplinary authoritarian style where sometimes uh, you got to be tough with the kid and maybe even physical corporal punishment. How do you stand on that one? So I have found that I get a lot further with love and with nurturing and affection. So yes. I'm very much a proponent of, and this is, I don't have my parenting expert hat on, I have my, <laughs> my mom and I look at how uh -huh. I was raised and nurtured. Yes. Not to say that I, I, have, I have very high expectations of my kids, absolutely, and yes. hard work, very important and valued. I don't believe in, I don't, sp I, I do not believe in physical uh, punishment at all. I don't, mm -hmm. I, I've never spanked or hit my kids. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not the mom who puts their kids in the corner when they misbehave. As a matter of fact, mm -hmm. when they misbehave, I do the complete opposite. <laughs> I remember when my son used to misbehave, instead of saying, go to your room, I used to get down on my knees and hug him and say, what is bothering you so much right now ah. that you're behaving this way? Let's talk about it. 
That is very much my approach. My approach is very warm and loving and not right. cold. Right. And so that means, that, you know, sometimes, listen, not everything's perfect, <laughs> but I, I think I'm raising kids that are motivated right. and driven right. to work because they right. see that their parents work hard. Right. But I believe very much in affection mm. and mentoring and guiding and... and uh, right. That's kind of the authoritative style they say in psychology, kind of a blend of warmth and discipline. But let's say there's some children that are, are called the difficult children, like they have... Um, high resistant to change, they kind of react very um, intensely and they can be very difficult, you know, if you, especially in like public places. So what if you have like a little bit of resistant, stubborn child, how would you approach that? I mean, would you still be compassionate or would you kind of compassionate or would you have to do some, a little bit of sterner discipline? Well, sure. I mean, it depends how difficult the child is. The child is exceptionally difficult and very resistant. Obviously, we're, you know, I would take them to seek help and seek counseling uh -huh. and work together side by side with a therapist to do, you know, either cognitive behavioral therapy uh -huh. or something yeah. to help them on their way. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not mm -hmm. a child psychologist. Right. Um, I'm a certified life coach. And so the line is different. But yes. uh there are certain things that are that I have, you know, difficulty with my kids. I just have to work harder in those areas. I have to go over those topics more. Yes. Um, and that may mean punishing them, not physically, but it may mean, mm. let's say they were going to watch the Montreal Canadiens at a hockey game Saturday mm. night with their friend. If they're disrespectful, oh. they right. didn't do something right. Well, it may wow. mean take that away. So no hockey for Canadians. I guess that, that's a, yeah. a death, that's a death, gonna, death blow, right? We're going to stay home. You've lost that opportunity. You've yes. lost that privilege. Wow. Now, the other thing is, um, I think you do have um, quite a bit of expertise in um, entrepreneurship. So the idea of the m mompreneur, which is, say, a mom that wants to maybe have her own business, maybe even stay home. And you talk about the uh, $2 trillion uh, mom market. So what are some of the tips? Let's say a woman has children. She wants to work from home if she can. Uh, how does she do that? So, well, first, I mean, you got to start from the beginning as far as Google, you know, you got to come up with an idea with yes. a name. You want to Google to make sure that name isn't taken. You want to get your business numbers in order. You want to, of course, have all your social media accounts up and running and you can try and keep those names the same across platforms. So you'll want your Twitter handle to be the same as your Instagram name, as your Facebook name. Um, you're going to want to post, you know, figure out, you know, the consistency of posting to start promoting your business. Ah. Um, you're going to want to keep the lines as least blurry as possible if you're working at home because that's when the lines can get blurry when you got a crying baby and you're trying to work. So I really, I say like even working from home, it's as, it's <laughs> as if you want to create a scenario that you're working at the office. So when you're with your child, you're with your child. Uh -huh. And then when your child is with a babysitter or napping or <laughs> with a friend or a grandparent, that's when you're working. So you have to go even harder and try even harder if you're a mom starting a business from home. But it can be done and it's fulfilling. And I think mm. that all women, regardless of their financial, you know, whether they're married, whether they're a trust fund, I don't care who you are, every woman needs a purpose. Um, and I, I feel ideally part-time work is ideal because there's a really great satisfaction in, in pulling in your own money in a paycheck, not to be, and that's not to be said, you know, if you're able in a financial position to stay home and not work, and that fulfills you, that's a beautiful thing. And so I say you absolutely should do that. But then volunteer. Have something for yourself that's just for you, that's separate from your children, separate from your partner, that you can start something, finish it, see it through, and derive a sense of satisfaction, accomplishment, and, so, and again, exercise that self-esteem muscle. Excellent. I like those advice. So you said uh, being a, blog, a consistency of posting, social media, uh, are there any groups that women should get involved with or networking things um, that you recommend for them? Well, for sure. I mean, you can always go online. There's always some great local networking events that you can attend. There's things like YEO, YPO, like Young Entrepreneur Organization. Yes. You know, you could check out events at your local chamber of commerce. There's meetup.com. There's all different places online to connect with like-minded people. Yes. Uh, where you can be mentored by other women. Um, if you're looking to you know, be mentored by a certain woman, well, then you just pick up the phone and call her or send her an email and say, you know, you can ask her if she would consider giving you some time time per month to mentor you in your business. But um, I think women need support and I think we do better when we have help and support. And uh, I have both been given support and help along the way and helped others along the way. And it, it it's all feels good. Yeah, sounds good. Now, how about uh, the idea of marketing to moms? Because you said it's a $2 trillion market. What are the things that moms look for in uh, services or products to say you, you want to offer something to them? Well, I think that, I mean, moms, I think even dads too. So I, I look, you look at someone like Steve Jobs and Apple, right? Yeah. I mean, you look how he changed the music industry, how he changed 
you know, the ability to have information in our hands with iPhones. So I think moms are looking for quick and easy and simplistic. I mean, you look at something like Amazon, I can get everything I want there. It houses <laughs> my card. It pushes yeah. information. It, it's smart. It knows what I like. So it sees uh -huh. if something's on sale, it'll remind me, oh, right. the sheets that you were looking at <laughs> are now on sale and we have your, and we've placed it yeah. in your cart. Yeah. We have your credit card on file. And right. so I was very resistant to shopping online. I still am. I'm very yes. much an uh -huh. in-person shopper, but I'm really right. starting to see what everyone's talking about. You know, right. as a very late adopter to right. online shopping, but I'm like, right. oh my God, you know, if the freight is free, it shows up at my door. Mm -hmm. I don't have mm -hmm. to stand in line at Costco. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, The, the other know, thing, I, uh, I mean, the great advantages, but at the same time, it's kind of taking down bookstores in a way. Like, you remember the old bookstore <laughs> idea where you can go to I, places and sit down? We don't not have just bookstores and music, yeah. music stores, oh, yeah. bookstores, yeah. CDs, yeah. books. Yeah, but that, I think that I think that bookstores will always have a place. I still think that yes. some people want to hold a hard copy. Yes. I don't think people want CDs in their car. I think they right. want to plug their phone in and right. have their music uploaded in Spotify or Apple mm -hmm. Music. So I think that is mm -hmm. incredible. But there yes. are people. I feel bookstores. I mean, I. I feel that there'll always be a place or a space for a Barnes and Noble, just maybe not at the you know the size it was before, but yes, definitely. Um, and you actually wrote a book, Ninety Nine Things Women Wish They Knew Before Starting Their Own Business. Yeah, and that, yeah. I think that could be very helpful. Now let me ask you something, Eric. Uh, you talk about women on the fence, but I'm visualizing a big fence where there are men on the other side of the fence, and they're sitting on the fence too. Yeah. And sometimes you know there could be almost like a misunderstanding of each other. So you know, men and women, gender differences. How do we bring men and women together so they can be kind of on the same fence and, uh, well, you know, be a part should, of, a, of a psychological team? Well, they should read the book, Men Are From Mars Women. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and, uh, and, of course, I wrote Love Types, which is on the Myers-Briggs personality, so that helps. <laughs> really? Okay, yeah. so well, how do we get them together? A, a great deal of good communication. Yes. And with, starting with things like I instead of you. Ah. I Mm -hmm. I am instead of you are, you do uh, this, you starting a sentence by you is attacking. Uh, yeah. I is a more subjective. <laughs> yeah. I'm so kind of curious, I, Eric, is your husband an introvert energy person? Because you seem like you're pretty extroverted. Is he like yeah, you? Or no, like, he's, you oh, right. he's the opposite. That's he's what I thought. Person. He's internal yeah. energy, introvert energy probably, like a little quieter. He is. <laughs> he's he's not, quiet and calculated and a thinker uh, and he's not see. social in public the way I am. We're, we're completely different beasts. Right. So you need to really appreciate each other's style because that, that can be a challenge sometimes when you don't uh, appreciate each other, the differences. Absolutely. And, and, Listen, I mean, I'm not saying we get along every day, but it's worth <laughs> Well, yeah, because uh, I guess he can kind of calm you down and you can kind of energize and socialize him sometimes. Well, so. that's it. We, he, I make him fun and he keeps me grounded. You know? <laughs> so I like we're, that. We're a good, you know, we're a perfect match. We're a great yes. team in that sense. Yes. Listen, it doesn't work all the time, but exactly. But it certainly yeah. it certainly works for us. Right. Now, you have a, you have a very inspirational, um, I guess, persona. I see here that you can really inspire people. So I'm wondering, on, a, on your own personal level, has there been a failure in your life, something that set you up for later success, something that kind of spurred you on? Well, I, I, I've actually given talks on failure, and I, I say I like to fail forward. So I, uh -huh. I bought my – my whole plan was to go into uh, – to go to MBA school, and, you know, I – I had great marks in school, but I bombed the GMAT, and oh. so I didn't know what I was going to do. And so oh. that led to my entrepreneurial journey. Then I felt like a failure when I couldn't manage my company, and I decided to sell it. I felt like I was throwing in the towel on my first baby that I had given birth to before my child. So I felt like I was being a quitter and, and you know giving up on my company then. I mean, I have felt many times along the way that I failed and tried mm -hmm. things that mm -hmm. didn't work out the way I hoped. But um, I, I really, truly, and I don't know why I'm like this. I'm just really very resilient, uh -huh. and so you're pretty optimistic. I, it sounds like you believe the best is yet to come. And when it's done, I close the chapter. I never look back, uh -huh. and I move on. I don't cry wow. over spilled milk. I don't look uh -huh. back and say, mm -hmm. "What did we do wrong?" Only if it's to serve me going forward. If it was uh -huh. something that I'm like, uh -huh. I mean, I look at it to understand what went wrong, but I don't. I'm not like, "Oh, could we have done this differently? Right. Would it have?" out I'm like exactly. no so re regret is something you don't really spend much time on it sounds like you, I don't you, regret you, you at move... some point it was exactly what you needed at that time right. so I do not right. do regret by the way who coined that the failing forward I've heard that before do you know who coined that phrase or is that a yeah, pretty popular I forget phrase? his name oh I'm, 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 he, he talks about failing forward and he blogged yeah. about it on my on my blog oh, okay that's kind of cool now uh, 
tell me, Erica, what what are, what is one of the biggest investments you've ever made? Now it could be time, money, energy, and tell me how how it paid off. Something that you invested a lot in, and it really paid off. I really, I, it's probably not the answer you're looking for, but I would say motherhood. Wow. <laughs> it's, it's, okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I I really I've sacrificed a lot career wise. Uh -huh be a mom yeah well actually, i'm glad to hear that i mean you know that's something um people may not even want to say too much these days because they... oh i'm i'm very i'm very authentic and real so i yeah. gave up a lot of career stuff yes for my kids because i uh -huh. wanted to be there every day after school doing right. the homework right. getting baths at night going to yes. hockey practice and so that means sometimes being on the computer at night or it means getting up early or it means, you know, missing, but, but I, I feel like I've put the most time into motherhood and, yes. and when my kids go into the real world and mm. like parents or teachers say, you've got a really polite, lovely mm. young man, young uh -huh. son, then I, then yeah. I know I've been good. Yeah, then so, I know exactly. the so, so you invested good. love in that, in the seed of love that will basically could be a legacy in the future, right? These children will grow up and be uh, positive uh, humans and then hopefully have their own children. So that, that, this is an amazing okay. investment. Yeah. It pays off, right? Okay, that's the, that's the idea. <laughs> now, if you could tweet one phrase to the world, and you, you like, you're a social media person, what would that be? Just one phrase. Oh God. <laughs> okay, I have so many. Yes. But I think that I think that um, the, the quote that I always use that pertains to off the fence living and women on the fence is, and the time came where um, the risk to remain tight in a bud was. Was, oh God, I haven't said it in a while. Was was bigger than something like than than the time it took to blossom. It's by Anise Nin. It goes as follows. Hold on. Oh, I actually have a few. I'm gonna read you a few because I have a list of sure. quotes. Sure. Okay. But um, okay. So the quote goes, and the time came when the risk to remain tight in a bud was more painful than the risk it took to blossom. Ah, that's beautiful. So what, what what does that mean actually to you? So that, that's all it means is getting off the fence. You realize it's time that staying stuck may be easier, but so the, t the time to remain tight as a bud is more painful. It's more painful to stay small and stuck than it is ah. to risk to blossom. Interesting. Um, Even though people think uh, they're comfortable in that little tight space because it's, no, it's known, but the unknown is fearful. But you said once you get into the unknown, it can be really exciting. And, and yeah, there's another one by Theodore Roosevelt. It's pretty. It's a little long, but it's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, mm. who strives valiantly, who errs and who comes short again and again because there's no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasm, the great devotion, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly. Wow, that's amazing. You uh, can, can be a politician someday. Uh, I, I, I have a whole, well, you asked me about the quote. So on my phone, I have um, oh, I have yeah. a file that says my favorite quote. Oh, wow, perfect. Uh, that's amazing. <laughs> and they're very inspirational too. <laughs> Now, Erica, what do you do? Uh, how do you balance yourself when things get overwhelming? Because I think you talk a lot about balance in your uh, yep. talks. Very easy. I get on my yoga mat. Ah, <laughs> yoga. Yep. And you I'm do a uh, like a certain, like a Bikram yoga or Hatha, any particular style? So I do a kind of hybrid between a vinyasa flow and a Hatha style. So like we flow one breath, one movement, and then, and then certain poses we hold more Hatha style where we breathe through poses. Yes. And when I feel overwhelmed, I get on my yoga mat and I do some flows. Mm. I meditate a good four or five days a week. I, I do deep diaphragmatic breathing. Wow. I, I'm very sure to care for myself when I feel mm. overwhelmed. So you're, very, you're, you're, you're a very spiritual person, it sounds like, in your own way. Yeah. You have a yeah. kind of I, belief in I, the higher. I definitely am. Um, and I think those are the times where it's really hard. Sometimes where we're too tired to go for the walk or we're too tired to go to the gym or we're too tired to like, those are the times where we've got to work even harder when we're feeling stressed and depleted yes. and we don't have the energy. Those are the times we've got to push ourselves a little bit harder. Exactly. You know, my book, Invincible You, that came out recently, talk about fear to faith or from pain to power. So what would you say is your greatest fear and how did you overcome it or are overcoming it? Hmm. My greatest fear. Um, I don't have fear of failure because I'm trying to think what my greatest fear is. Do you have fear of not being a good mom, for example, or a wife oh, or anything like that? Nope, 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 mm -hmm. <laughs> nope. 
what am I, what, what am I afraid of? I'm not afraid of not being a good mom. I'm not afraid of trying or putting myself out there. I know that the elephant in the room is that I'll fail. That's the mm-hmm. elephant in the room is that I tried something. Have, and- you, have you ever had a fear that you ever came though? Like when you were younger, were you ever shy or fearful in any way? Or have you always been this confident person? Well, I was never shy. I, I mean, when I was younger, I didn't think it was appropriate for women to be so like this, so outgoing. So I would try ah, and like okay. it. I would try and be a quiet little girl and it didn't uh-huh. feel so like fear, me. fear of social disapproval when you were younger, you may have had. I, yeah, I guess maybe, but the way to overcome that is just to prove to yourself that you can do things and just to test yourself. And then you start to become more confident. I mean, like becoming an entrepreneur was the best thing I could have done for my confidence, yes. my self esteem. Like as you start to prove to yourself that you can do things, you'll start to feel good about yourself. So a lot of the self-doubt washes away as you try new things and you fail and sometimes you fail and sometimes you succeed and sometimes mm-hmm. they plan, but... I like that. You know, I'm actually a shy person. I wrote a book called The Gift of Shyness and uh, I took you know, acting classes and, and you know, public speaking. And those are the kind of things that I think also help people, you know, expand your, your self-confidence and your ability to communicate. Now, uh, is there anything, Erica, right now that you are excited about? Any career or business ventures that you're working on in the future that you would like to tell us? Yeah, sure. So, uh, well, a couple of things. I, I mean, I don't know how many listeners are from Montreal, but yeah. I'm hosting an awesome conference in Montreal called Media Women Montreal yes. for entrepreneurs to learn how to um, pitch the media, how to leverage media and social media to grow their businesses. So that's called Media Women Montreal. And I am starting the Erica Diamond podcast. Wow. Um, Spring, early summer, so I'm really excited. Okay, well, uh, I'm open to being on your show if you want me awesome. on. Awesome. I can't wait to <laughs> I actually have my first podcast interview tomorrow morning. I'm quite nervous. Wow. Excellent. <laughs> I'm not nervous for the interview. I'm nervous that I'm not going to know how to work mm-hmm. the equipment. <laughs> oh, okay. I think, I think you do great. You have uh, the kind of char- charisma for that. Uh, and also, Erica, where can uh, our listeners hear more about you? Because I think you have a lot of exciting things to talk about. Oh, thank you. Great. Well, they can watch me on TV every Wednesday, but if they miss it, the links I usually post in my social media, so they can visit me in two places, womenonthefence.com and erica-diamond.com. And then my social media handles are Eric Diamond, E-R-I-C-A Diamond. And so I'm there and I answer all my tweets and Instagram and Facebook. And so just just say hi. <laughs> That's great. What TV show are you on, Eric? In case people are in I'm on order? Global News. I'm the weekly parenting and lifestyle correspondent every Wednesday morning oh, that, at 8. That's, that's wonderful. So, Eric, yeah. it's been wonderful to have you on our show. And, um, you know, if you ever get down here, maybe we can collaborate on some uh, activities or seminars or something. Sounds uh, amazing. Yeah, even through the Internet, because you do have a lot to offer. I think um, the idea of empowering women, I think empowering uh, basically anyone to live their dreams, right, to go beyond uh, fears and obstacles and uh, to succeed and also at the same time be a, a, a family person that, that's something that a lot of people don't talk about to be a mom or dad is is a great success in itself you know it, it's a way to express and experience love well, and that's what, and it, the yeah. same to you and kudos and congrats to you and all the work that you're doing and thank all the you. important work that you're doing in your space as well thank you uh, the world needs more people like this <laughs> <laughs> Or our, one of our missions is to help eradicate loneliness, you know, in the world. And loneliness can be disconnection from yourself. Others are a higher nature. And I think uh, you're helping people do that. So we, we're really pleased with that. So, again, this is Dr. Alex Avila. This has been Love University. If you want to reach us and ask any questions about today's show, you can write to us at lovetype 4 you at AOL.com. That's L-O-V-E-T-Y-P-E, the number four, letter U at AOL.com. Visit us at loveuniversity.love. Like us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And we just had a great conference uh, over here in Los Angeles, the Book Festival Los Angeles. We had a lot of uh, great guests on our show, and we had an amazing time. And you can, guys can get a hold of that, uh, CDs that were available for if you're interested. So again, uh, Erica, thanks for being on the show, and uh, we look forward to seeing you in the future. We'd love to have you back and co- collaborate with you in the future. Thank you so much for having me. It was wonderful. Fantastic. So love university students. Please put away your pens, notepads, books, iPads, and everything else. And we'll see you next time, Dr. Avila.